So, in order to be able to search in our MongoDB application, we are going to use a very, very advanced uh, method of searching in MongoDB. First of all, let me quickly create a uh, function that is going to do that in our controller. So, let's call it search recipe. So, this is going to search the recipe for us. Now, this is not going to just be some, you know, we're checking if it is here, if it is here, if it is here. We're going to use uh, an advanced MongoDB Atlas feature to perform this search. Searching, so why do we still have, okay, yeah. So, to perform this uh, searching functionality. So, first of all, let's go back to our MongoDB application. Let's go back there. I want to go to the recipes side, click on recipes. Now, when you click on recipes, you click on, you go through it, look for search index. So you see find, you see indexes, you see schema and see patterns, you see aggregations, click on search index. We're going to create a search index that will enable us to perform a very fast searching here. So you scroll down, when you scroll down, just click on create search index. And then let's scroll down again. Of course, I'm going to click on create search index. I wanted, oh, sorry, no, 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 not there. Create search index, yeah. Now we're going to use the visual editor. You can use the visual editor or the JSON editor, but I'm going to use the visual editor. So I'm going to click on next. And the uh, index is going to be called recipe. And the database, of course, is foodie duty with the capitals where they are and the collection is recipe so this is going this is an advanced searching method in uh mongodb we are going to explore here it's going to be very fast it's faster than the text-based searching so and then we're going to click next so um i think we're saying we should review this i guess let's review scroll down is there anything we want to do no let's just click on create search index and it's going to take some time to build. So once it's uh, activated, we will see it here. So it is obviously uh, a dynamic field. And then we have, I think it's still running. So while we are waiting for this to, uh, this our index to get started, let's start forming our, our fields. So let's go back to the VS script. And right here, inside here, first of all, we are going to have a query parameter. If you know query parameter, when you have something like slash, Find then exclamation mark, let's say query equal to let's say food. So this here is a query parameter. So we are going to use that. So right here, we're just going to destructure our query parameter. I'm going to call it Q. And then we're going to say from request or query. Just like before, we don't care if um, we don't want to check anything here because our, our middleware is going to take care of making sure that something is there. If there's nothing there, it's not going to get to this uh, controller here for anything to, for it to crash our server or for an error to occur. All right, so we get it first of all. Then what we want to do, let's create what we call pipeline. So it's const pipeline. pipeline. And for now, it's just going to be an empty array. Let me check the database again if it's, uh, if it's ready now. Let's hit this place and it seems that it is ready. So it says test your query. I can actually test it, but I don't have anything. Uh, let's just say um, our recipe has a title. So let's say we have a recipe that has a title of uh, chicken. Uh, but we know that there's nothing like that. So if I say search, uh, scroll down, it's searching to correct please. Now it doesn't find any document. Obviously, we don't have any recipe. We are not even implemented the creation of recipe uh, functionality. But you can click on view syntax. So see the syntax that was used. If I click on that, you see I have in my pipeline, I have the search. I have the index is recipe. And I have the text. The text is query. And it's searching for title. And it's searching, the search word is chicken. And the part is a, is a wild card that has star, which simply means check everything. So this, we can copy this. To start with, so in our pipeline, we can copy this one. So I'm going to go back, or let me just click the copy button here, I guess. Copy. I'll go back to my VS Code, and I'll paste that in my pipeline, first of all. Okay, I think I need to remove the outer arrow function. Uh, um, sorry, array. Outer array. 
Now, so I have this already, starting right from my MongoDB. The index is recipe. So we are looking at, remember we're looking at the recipe collections. And with this index now, whenever we want to search anything is in our database, it's going to be very, very fast first. And the text here is just, in our own case here, the text is going to be Q, which is the query that the user has typed in. It's going to be Q. And the part is, as we are going to have a white card, which is everything. So it's going to search the title, it's going to search the description, it's going to search the notes. If you remember our schema for recipe. So that is what this, this means. So search everything. So if I type, uh, let's say, um, chicken, and then um, if chicken appears in the description, it's going to return that. If chicken appears in the probably in uh, in your title, it's going to return that. In your notes, it's going to return that. So it's going to search everything and return that for us. So what that is what this is doing. Now we also need to do something. Remember that in each of our query, we want to return the user also back. We also want to return the user because we want to say, okay, this user is the person that created this recipe. So we have to pass that up in our pipeline here. After this search object, we are going to have another object. And this object is the lookup. See, lookup is like join. So we want to look up is a, let's say we have an object A and we have an object B. And we want to get something from object A. So we say look up from our object B, go to object A and maybe pick out some field or get something for us. So we are picking out some, talk, uh, some stuff from object A or maybe combining both of them together. So if you are coming from the SQL word, that is join. So what is the name of these collections? The name is users. Remember, we have recipes and users collection. What is the local field? Look, what name do we give it in our own schema for recipe? We call it user. If, you, if I check that again, you see, uh, if I go to recipe here, if I scroll down, you see we call it user here. So I want you to look up the user collections for us. And what is the foreign key? In the user collections, the ID is underscore ID. But in our recipe, it's simply user. So what do we want to return it as? We want to return it as user. So when we query, it's going to come back as user for us. All right. So we have done this now. Now this is going to come back as an array. We want to project. We go after the lookup object, we have another object called project. So project is simply how is our data going to come back? What kind of data are we going to come, uh, expect? So we're saying we want to have the user one, which simply means that it's going to come back. If we add zero there, that means we don't want to show the user. For example, you don't want underscore ID to come back. Remember, underscore ID is coming back by default. So you can just pass in underscore ID here, underscore ID, and then zero. So this simply makes sure that underscore ID doesn't appear in your query. But we want it, we want every project to have an ID, so we're going to leave that. So we are saying that the notes should also be there, the description should be there, the title, the ingredients and the image. Now, initially you might have tried or uh, you could try to get, since we know that it's going to be a single user and we know it's going to come back as an array here, you might try to query it as to, to get maybe array at the index of zero or whatever, but MongoDB doesn't support that yet. I don't know if it's going to support that in the future, but right now we know that when we look up, we're going to get an array of items. So this is our pipeline now. Our pipeline is ready. So this one is for searching and this one is for joining and then this is to project with the information that we need so by the time we get our data back these are the only things that will be there we won't have things like created at updated at underscore underscore v that mongodb appends to uh, all, all our queries now what else do we need to do now if you look at this uh search here there's one thing i want to add now, I want it to be that if you make mistakes in your spelling, for example, you want to spell, uh, let's say, GOAT, G-O-A-T, or maybe you write something like G-O-T, I want MongoDB to be able to find GOAT with the correct spelling for you. So if you make mistakes in your spelling, and um, maybe you have things that are synonymous or they look alike, I want MongoDB to bring those things back. I don't want you to say, oh, you typed GOAT, I must fetch only the things that contain GOAT. So, in case you make spelling, maybe you want to type Java, J-A-V-A, -A, and then you just type J-A-V. I want MongoDB to be able to find Java. So, we are going to do that using the fuzzy keyword. So, right after our part here, our white card, we are going to pass the fuzzy. So, so what this simply, this is supposed to take in everything that we 
uh, we want MongoDB to do with some whatever we want. But in this case, I'm just going to pass in an empty object here, which simply means everything. As long as they look alike, they are synonymous, it seems to be this kind of thing, bring them back. So that is what this keyword here is doing. So if you if you want to spell Java and you type JAV, then MongoDB is going to search and anywhere it contains Java is going to bring that back. It's not going to say, oh, it must be Java. So that's why we are adding this particular one here. So with this now, our pipeline is ready and we can use it in a query. Now, before I hit off with that, I'm going to go to the Explorer and I'm going to go to the source, right click, new, uh, new folder, I'm going to call it add types. So I want to create the types for this particular one here. I want, to, I want it to be outside because there are many. If it's just a little thing, I will just create it right here from the file. And I'm just going to have a single one called index.d.ts. I'm not going to create different files. And I'll just uh, have paste these things here. So now we have our type here. So our search recipes, if you want to search, we are expecting that the response we are going to have is going to have an image that is of search user array because remember we are going to have an array. So the search is going to be just contain an email. So our user, if you remember our query, we're only returning the email. We're going to have the email as an array here. But mind you, we're going to work that out to make sure that we only have an object, not an array. We're also going to have a note of string, a description of string title, ingredients, image. An image, remember an image is just, it's just not a string. The image is going to contain an ID and a URL. The image is going to contain an ID and a URL. So let me save that. Now, um, yes, what else do we have here? Then the response, what do we want to send back for the, uh, the client when we are done? We are going to send a user as a string, which is just going to be the email. But when we query, first of all, we're not going to get a, uh, a string or an object to use. We're going to get an array of objects. So then we are going to send everything back here. So the difference between the search recipe response and the search recipe is just that the user here in this case is an array of search user. But in this case here, it's just simply a string. Whereas here it is not. So that is just the difference here. And we have these types here. So now I'm going to go ahead and use this in my query here. So I'm going to say const recipe. So we're going to get any recipes, whatever. And it's going to be of type search, search recipes. As an array, I'm going to say it's going to be await recipe model dot aggregate. Now this time around we are aggregating. And then we pass in our pipeline. So our aggregate pipeline. What I think I forgot to mark the, let me see this as asynchronous. So it's going to be asynchronous. All right, let me close this off. So we, we are now saying, okay, we want to get recipes of type search recipes array. And then we pass in this as, into an aggregate function. So you can read in MongoDB aggregate function where we pass in, we chain in different uh, functions or pipelines of different uh, things to run. Let's like we have here. So we have this one running with this one running and then we have our project running down. So we are chaining different things together and we just call it pipeline. So um, you can read up on MongoDB aggregates, but that is what this pipeline we were creating initially was for. All right. So now that we have searched for all this and return all this with our pipeline, what do we want to do? We want to remove, um, we want to get a single user, which is going to be the user email. So we don't want to return everything like this and then we will have the user being an uh, array of objects. So we want to uh, destroy, we want to get that out. So let's create a variable. Let's click let response, let's call it response, which is going to be of such uh, recipe response. It's going to be an array of that. Initially, it's going to be an empty array. Did I not import this? Okay, it seems like I didn't import that. Let me import that. Okay, so initially, it's going to be an empty array. And what do we want to do? We're going to say if if recipes the length. So if we have something actually the length. So this double exclamation is going to make sure that if it is zero, it's going to be false. So from one upwards, it's going to be true. So if we have something, then we're going to say response. So we are updating the value. It's going to be the recipes dot map. We want to go through the recipe. So we 
We are now getting each individual recipe, which is going to be of type search. Uh, no, no, no. Search, search, um, search recipe. But this time around, it's just going to be a single one, not an array. And we are going to say, what we want to do here, we are going to say that, first of all, we say const user. We are just out out the user. And the rest of the file will leave, I will just call it rest from recipe. So remember that in our pipeline, we are going to have user, note, description, title, ingredients, and image. But this user is an array of objects. So what we have just done below is that we have said, give us the users, but leave all these ones alone. So let's go back here now. We have taken out the user. What do you want to do to the user? We're going to say const email is equals to user at position zero dot email. We only have a single user, but we just want to create the user at zero dot email. Give us that user. Now, we want to return. So what is function, this uh, map to return. First of all, we're going to say that the user is going to be called uh, is the email and want to pass in every other thing here. So with this now, we have returned the response and the user is just going to be a, a an email, a string, which is an email. So that is our search recipe response. So we have been able to convert the array of objects into a single string. Now, if you have your own use case, you don't have to convert it. But for mine, what, what, what I intend to do, we do not want uh, when you search, we don't want multiple users. We'll just have a single user for a single recipe. See, the recipe has a single user or a single person that created them. Multiple people are not creating one recipe. So we do not expect to have many, many recipes. But in the case, for example, you have a model whereby you have um, multiple users maybe creating one thing, then you obviously you are going to have an array like this and you don't need to do all this. But for us, we have a single user uh, that created this particular recipe. So we have to take that out. Now that we have that, what do we want to do? We're just going to say res dot status of 200. So we have found whatever we are searching for, or JSON, I'm going to pass in the response. So that is simply means that if there is nothing in the response, uh, in the recipes, we're just going to return an empty array. But if there is something, we are going to return an array of uh, these items. So with this now, our search functionality is ready and should work very, very fine. Now, before I go back to the last thing, which is creating the um, the create recipe part, I want to go back to our route and pass in this, uh, these guys there. So let's first of all go to the index. Do we have, we don't have a uh, recipe exported there. So I'm going to say export. No, not export. Right in the export, I'm going to say search recipe. I'm going to say get recipe. So get all recipe. I think these are the ones that we have implemented. So we now have all these being expected right here in our index. Let's go to the routes then. So in the source folder, go to the route, go to recipes. So what do we want to do here? So this is find, which is for the searching. So we want to pass in the recipe schema. So after you have validated, so not recipe schema, the recipe controller. After you are done, we are done validating that the recipe contains a query. We then call the search recipe. Search recipe is going to come from, let me see. Yeah, here. So let me just bring it down. So I can be able to see that. And then after you add, we don't have anything for the create yet. But for the getting the user schema, we are going to go get user. Let me close this. Not get the user controller, get user recipes. Uh, let me make sure that imports. Does it, okay, doesn't import. Let me just go here. Get user. Oh, okay, what's well, schemas? It's get user recipes, not schema. Get user recipes. Then for this one, that's going to give us a single. A single recipe we say get recipe simply get recipe okay, so let me import that from here get recipe yeah so i think we are good to go the only thing remaining now is okay i haven't have i done for search yeah i think i've done for search i think we are missing one which is get all recipe which is here 
slash so when we go to slash recipes we want to uh we're not validating anything here because we are not passing anything we just want you to come here and see everything from there so i'm going to call get all recipes so we want you to get all recipes so once you hit this particular round let me should i make it first of all and i think i will have to remove this join this join is for the odds not for the recipes so let me put this on first here so once you hit this route slash then we will just want to fetch all the recipes and send to you when you go to find you have to provide us with a query parameter so it's going to be slash find exclamation let me say slash find exclamation q equal to let's say chicken and then we are going to read this and do something with it so if you don't provide this then this validates middleware here is going to throw an error for you same thing for finding by the user id which is going to just make us find all uh, the ones that belong to the user and then also finding by is uh the recipe id a single one so what we are going to go and deal with now is the creating of recipes